The Superfly is back. I, I mean, black. Back in black, even though it kind of never left. It's the new Superfly. What's going on guys? Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on-feet video of the brand new Nike Mercurial Superfly 7 Elite in one of two launch colorways, this being the Blackout Under the Radar Pack. Looking back on the history of the Superfly series, while it's been very important for the industry in regards to introducing new technologies and concepts, it's been a very up and down journey with, in my opinion, a lot of the Superflies being some of the worst Mercurials Nike has ever produced. The Superfly 1, 2, and 3 were were borderline unwearable. The Superfly 4 changed everything and is definitely one of the most important football boots of the modern era. A lot of people's all-time favorites as well and rightfully so. While the 5 and 6 were maybe not the most interesting Superflies that Nike ever produced. Well I'm here to tell you that the Superfly 7, if you were a fan of the Superfly 4, is the closest thing to that. But not only is it close to the Superfly 4, it's actually better. So with that in mind, I want to go over all the details of the new Superfly 7, compare it to past Superfly models, and talk about in which ways I I think it's similar and better than the iconic Superfly 4 that came before it. So if you're interested in learning more, including how they fit and feel on feet, please stick around and watch the entire video. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, do not pay full retail. I'm going to leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That's going to take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes for these as well as the blue colorway where you can pick these boots up below their normal $275 retail price. If you guys do end up enjoying this review and want to see more content on the new Mercurial lineup, don't forget to support this one with a like and let me know which specific videos you'd like to see down below in the comment section. Also, if you're new here watching for the first time, and don't want to miss out on daily football boot content from me, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. Included with the boots is a box. And they also include a string bag, which you may have noticed is the same as the old string bag featuring the old Mercurial M logo that used to be featured on the boots, no longer the case. It's black in color with this kind of iridescent blue, greenish, purple color changing effect to it. It's got a Nike swoosh on the bottom, nothing on the back. It's a decent string bag. I would have liked to see something with the designs featured on the boot itself, but we didn't get that. Maybe we'll get it in the future. This gets a string bag score of one out of 3.29. As for the boots themselves, let's start with the obvious. The Superfly 7 is the Vapor 13 with a collar. With that collar designed specifically to provide ankle support, and by ankle support I mean it is very thin stretchy material that barely wraps your ankle tight enough to the point where you can't even feel it when you're actually wearing the boots. But believe what you want to believe. And just to give you guys a quick side by side, it is a touch shorter than what was found on the Superfly 6 Elite that it replaces. It has a little bit more of a forward slope to it as well. But the big difference here is the type of material or the type of fly knit that it's made out of. It's still fly knit, of course, but it's about half the thickness of what we saw before. And it's just a lot less structured. It is trending much towards being a sock versus kind of an elasticated structured piece. Either way, neither of them are really providing any kind of ankle support or restriction, but this is probably the flimsiest collar we've ever seen on a pair of Superflies, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing, but I do think it does look a little bit cheap. It's also worth noting that the Superfly is $25 more expensive than the Vapor simply because of the collar. It doesn't change the construction or fit in the heel whatsoever. It's just some added material around your ankle. So if you like the way that that looks and you like the way I guess that's all it really does, it just looks. Just like the collar, the upper is made out of fly knit, and it's a fly knit that is very thin, reminiscent of what we saw originally introduced on the Superfly 4, because the main reason why a lot of people who were longtime Superfly fans were disappointed with the 5 and 6 is that it seemed like the upper was getting progressively thicker rather than thinner, which is kind of what the Mercurial series is all about, a barefoot feel. You definitely get that now with the redesigned fly knit upper on the Superfly 7, that is basically two different types of yarns to create a sock-like feel, but also structure without adding any kind of stiffness. And I should be clear in saying that it's not two layers of material, it's two types of yarns intertwined to create one upper. So you have your base yarn, which is basically this kind of grid pattern that you see throughout the entire upper. It's the thicker type of yarn that's providing the sock-like softness and feel on your foot, but it doesn't have much structure to it. So to add structure without using any kind of hard materials, they use what's called high tenacity yarn which is a brand new technology 
from the Nike brand. Almost think of it as quad fit incorporated into the Flyknit upper itself. The high tenacity yarn is actually a derivative of their Flywire technology. This not having direct Flywire cables or Brio cables like we saw on the Superfly 4 that were very effective, but they also created pressure points along the upper. This is actually a similar grid pattern to what you see on the surface, but very, very thin woven into everything to give you the structure throughout the entire foot with the laces tied, but without taking away from the softness and flexibility. Truly for pretty much the first time ever, the sock-like upper on a pair of Superflies really does feel like an actual sock. So in terms of touch on the ball, it definitely has that premium barefoot sensation that you're looking for, but with a little added texture. So there is arguably a little bit more grip on the ball versus what that boot provided. It does have a Nike skin top layer that now spans the entire upper. There's no more exposed areas aside from across the top of the foot, like we saw on the Superfly 6 that this replaces. And it does also have ACC technology, despite them not actually putting the ACC branding anywhere on the boot this time. But if you look really, really closely, you can see that the ACC is still invisible. Running directly through the middle of the boot is the lacing system using a dual lace hole setup because this still has a one piece construction to the upper where across the top of the foot where a tongue would normally be, it is that elasticated fly knit material that is thinner than what we saw before flowing directly into the collar, which brings us to the rear of the boot where it does have the standard low cut design that was first introduced on the previous generation Superfly 6. So this is not gonna have the chafing at the back of your Achilles tendon like we had on the Superfly 4 and the 5 to a certain extent. The 6 really fixed that. It is still fixed on the Superfly 7. Um, and then you have the internal heel liner that is basically the same as the boot that it replaces. A nice synthetic suede material with perforated liner as well. The insole is fully removable and unchanged from the previous generation. It features their Nike Grip liner on the surface, which just feels like a regular smooth mesh. And it's made from a single layer of this greenish yellow foam with this little stiffer foam insert through the midfoot that you're not gonna feel. It's not there for cushioning, but you can see there is a pattern pressed into it to actually match the pattern on the underside of the sole plate to help lock it in place. The sole plate and stud pattern being a modified variation of what we saw originally introduced on the previous generation Mercurial, where it's still a split sole construction. You have that anatomic sole plate base that you can't see that runs from heel to toe. You have the fly knit wrapping the midfoot, and then you have two stud plates, one in the forefoot, one in the heel. You can see the stud plate in the heel has a little cutout through the middle inspired by the GS360 to shave as much weight as possible. Aside from that, it feels totally the same. And then in the forefoot, you have their arrow track plate, which you can see has this kind of arrow pointed design that is actually designed to provide this spring back effect when flexing the foot. So when you're sprinting, it's supposed to, as you load it up, kind of give you that spring back. And there is a very progressive load to this where it's not too stiff at first, but the more and more it bends, the stiffer and stiffer it gets to give you that spring back effect. Is it actually going to make you run faster? I would say no, but it does feel quite good. Also, you may have noticed in the forefoot, while the stud layout is the same, the chevron studs themselves have a little bit of an extra angle to them at the tip, basically the point of the chevron, which doesn't really change up the grip, I find, but it is a small difference. And also, they've actually added one millimeter to the length of all the studs. Whether or not that actually makes a difference, though, very difficult to say. And then there's the weight, which hasn't really changed much because the core design and elements used on this boot are pretty similar to the Super Superfly 6 Elite. So in a size 9.5 US, the Superfly 7 Elite, as you can see, weighs in at 6.9 ounces, the equivalent of 196 grams, which is more or less identical to the Superfly 6 Elite, give or take one or two grams in favor of the 7. So technically it is a little bit lighter, but it's the littlest bit that it could possibly be. So they're all black boots that come with all black laces, but I have swapped out those plain black laces for some black reflective SR4U replacement laces that add the reflective bits, but still maintain the all black look, which I would assume you're going for if you're buying this particular colorway. These laces, however, make yours that much more unique in comparison to everyone else that will inevitably end up with the same pair. So if you want to change up the style of your boots in a very inexpensive way, the website to do that at is www.sr4ulaces.com. So if you're interested in a pair for yourself, link down below in the description, go ahead and check it out. On feet, the Superfly 7 feels great. And in comparison to the Superfly 6 it replaces, it is just that much more sock-like on feet. It no longer has that kind of stiffer, slightly plasticky sensation out of the box. And that's not to say that the Superfly 6 was bad, but this feels like a huge improvement to me. Also the collar, as you can see, 
is a little bit shorter this time around. It's almost at the point where it's kind of like that half length collar that we saw on the custom variation that Cristiano Ronaldo wore of the Superfly 4. Um, and it's just thinner material. It is the least noticeable collar we've ever had on a pair of Superfly. So again, there really isn't much to expect here in regards to ankle support or a change up in feel in comparison to the Vapor. It really is just a matter of whether or not you like the look of the collar. And honestly, I don't think that it looks that bad to be fair. As far as the fit is concerned, that has also been changed in comparison to the previous generation where they have lowered the volume significantly. So these fit a lot more like the Superfly 5 and the Vapor 11 did in regards to volume, but the base shape of the shoe is still the same. So it's not quite as narrow in the toe box and forefoot as those boots were, but it definitely has been taken down in comparison to the Superfly 6, fitting a lot more like a Mercurial should fit, wrapping your foot that much more closely. And because the flying it upper is so soft this time around, it just moves very nicely with your foot. So despite fitting tighter, the boots actually feel a lot more comfortable, which is typically not what you expect. As far as width is concerned, they're definitely not excessively narrow, but they're not exceptionally wide either. So if you had really wide feet, or you just don't like the fit of tight boots, probably not a great option for you, but I definitely think these will fit most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US, and the fit and the length is perfect. So if you're looking to order a pair for yourself, I'd recommend going true to size for the best possible fit. So in conclusion, is this the best Superfly ever? In my opinion, yes. It is a huge improvement over the Superfly 6 Elite that it replaces. So if you had those boots and you really like them and wish that they had more to them that was similar to the Superfly 4, this gives you the feel of the Superfly 4, a lot of the performance characteristics of the Superfly 6, but also a bunch of new tech that just works extremely well, all wrapped up into one boot. That is what describes the Superfly 7. It also must be said, the Superfly 7 is still the same as the Vapor 13. They are basically variants of the exact same boot, this being the more expensive variant. So again, unless you really, really want the collar, you'd probably be better off saving the $25 and just going for the Vapor. Either way, it's an excellent product, an excellent speed boot, and one that I can very strongly recommend. Although I do think that Nike should make the Superfly different from the Vapor, it's just more fun that way. Anyways guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself in either this colorway or the blue colorway that are available at launch right now, you can click the first link down below. That's gonna take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. We'll be able to pick these up below Below their normal $275 retail price. If you have any questions, as always, leave it down below in the comment section, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you as soon as I possibly can. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.